Today, I have a very special video and a very special guest, my lovely fiance and attorney, Layla. Today, we're gonna talk about her AWS Cloud Practitioner Challenge in 30 days. Hi everyone and Happy New Year. So this is a very excited journey for me just to like as someone who has, is not familiar with tech going through this 30 day challenge. Um, so we're going to start by reviewing the exam guide today and uh, what I got as a result of review, reviewing the exam guide. Now, if you're new here, I'm Greg, the creator of Thoughtful Techie Cloud, and each week I'm bringing you a video to help you navigate your AWS cloud and tech journey. If you haven't already, make sure you go ahead and subscribe right now. So if you have been on the channel for a while, you know, you've seen me go through various exam guides. I've gone through the AWS cloud practitioner, but never gone through that exam guide through the eyes of somebody without a technical background. So if you have been seeing my videos and you're thinking, you know what, I sure would like to learn more about AWS, but you just had all this hesitation due to your lack of technical background. Look at this video and look at Layla and her journey is something that you can pattern behind so you can do it as well. The cloud practitioner does not take a technical background and we're gonna to prove to you, hopefully in around 30 days, that, that is the case. Now, Layla has reviewed the exam guide this past evening, so I'm just going to kick it off here and uh, let Layla explain that through through her eyes. So, Layla, I know you reviewed this last night. Uh, what were your kind of initial impressions before we kind of dig deeper into it? So it was very straightforward. It's, it tells you about like you know what to expect from the exam you know, what are the areas that they're going to test you on, what areas are not going to be tested on, how many percentage uh, of each area is going to be in the exam, which is really good because it's kind of tell you, okay, where to um, put your focus on. So I, I jotted notes. down here, so it's going to be 34% cloud tech and services. So, and then followed by 30% security. So these two in and of itself just consider 64%. Wow, it's exam. like almost two thirds of the exam are based on those topics. Yeah. And then 24% is the cloud concepts and 12% is billing and pricing and things like that. So of course, you know, I'm gonna study all of them and I'm gonna uh, watch the videos on all of them. Um, but I'm not going to put 10 hours on the billing and one hour on the security based on these percentages that uh, we talked about. Um, another important thing is that, you know, there are 50 unscored, 15 unscored question in there. So, um, you know, these, these are just like examiners. And I think it's in every kind of exam. Like yeah. they put these uh, questions just to see how the uh, people that take these exams do. And they take it as a feedback for making future questions. Mm -hmm. So I'll jump in there real quick, Layla. So those items that Layla was kicking off with, uh, cloud tech and services, security and billing, these are called the domains. So within Cloud Practitioner, got my trusty iPad here, there are a series of domains. Let's see here. There are four actually. So there's cloud concepts worth 24%, security and compliance worth 30%, the cloud technology and services, which Layla was talking about, 34%, and then the billing. So you, when you're reviewing the exam guide, and if you're wondering, hey, what do you, where do you get all this stuff? Not to worry, I'm gonna put that down in the links below. This is kind of like your game plan going in and then the exam guide goes through different task statements. So the structure is, or the hierarchy, however you want to look at it, are domains. Then within the domains are various task statements, which go into very great depth in each of the domains. And then you mentioned the questions. There are a total of 65 questions. 15 of them, as Layla pointed out, are unscored. The trick is you don't know which one of those are unscored. So. You could miss 15 of those experimental exam questions and still do pretty good. 
but you won't know which one those are. Another thing I learned is that they're not going to punish you for guessing. So if you don't know the answer of any question, just guessing is, is much better than leaving it blank. So that was also good to know. And then the magic number, the magic number to pass this exam is... You need a 700 minimum. Out of thousands. So it's thousand. basically 70%. And uh, just remember the magic number, 70%. So um, doesn't matter how much you know, doesn't matter as long as you get that number. And I was reading the guide and it was saying that they also, is not like that they want a specific percentage in every each of these sections that we talk about, so this is good. So as long as you answer, you get that magic 700, you're good to go. Exactly. So any other uh, parting words of wisdom at the review in that exam guide? Is somebody just starting out with this that you think would be helpful to share? Um, no, my understanding is that so I was getting overwhelmed go, going over all these like detail in the exam guide about what they're going to test and stuff but then I realized that these are all going to be like videos that I'm going to watch so I'm not going to be uh, worried about that so you are the thoughtful techie so you tell me what do you want to add yeah so the exam guide when you're first reading these things can be kind of intimidating this exam guide for the cloud practitioner is 22 pages but I was telling Layla you know, you really only need to read the first 13 because after the 13th page, you get into the appendix. And as long as you understand, OK, how many questions are going to be on this thing? What's the passing score? Who's the ideal candidate? And you go into those domains and tasks. Once you understand that, that's great, because the exam guide is not it's not a tra uh, to train you. It's literally like the name says is to guide you. So the next step after Layla has uh, consumed this is to begin the training. So we'll be keeping you up to date with uh, all sorts of short form content and long form content as well, like this video on Layla's training journey. Oh, and I forget one important thing that I missed. What's that? Okay, so there's going to be two form of questioning on the exam. Oh, yeah, that's good. Okay. So one of them is going to be your regular multiple choice. Like, you know, it's going to be four, four answers and then one of them is going to be correct. And so basically the other three are, they call it distractors. Mm -hmm. um, and then, Can you tell them what a distractor is? This is a quiz for Layla because I told her this last night. I'm going to see if she remembers. This distractors are just like these questions that the answers that kind of feel like, you know, they have some buzzword in it that may appear it as in, in like the right answer but if you know the concept and if you know the mm, your material you know that okay this is not the right answer like it has some of the correct words but it's not all of it you got it correct okay thank and you. this is why they pay her the big bucks <laughs> yeah and then there is also another type of question that's interesting um you know in any exam that i have done it before i have never seen it so uh i look forward to do some practice tests and those see. are the multiple response right yes you want to talk about that real quick yes so we talk about one the, the multiple choice ones that is just like one answer right uh, but then there are some questions that might have two or three um, kind of answers that you need to check so that's going to be interesting. Exact. And the thing you have to be careful with on those, if it says multiple response, like pick two of the best out of these five choices and you only pick one that's correct, but you leave the other one blank, then that whole question is wrong. There's no, there's no partial credit. So there's, it's all or none for those. Do they give you any like, you know, some sort of a cue or something in the question that uh, you realize that this is a... How many? A multiple? Yes, like, oh yeah, it, it'll clear the multiple response will clearly say um, pick two of the best blanks. So it, it won't be a guess as to 
how many selections you need. Oh, to make. okay. So they give you the number, even the number. The number. Oh my gosh, this is gonna be. Oh yeah, really yeah, yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah awesome. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, that's it. So I think we covered the pretty much all the mechanics of it. what you really want to take away from this video is definitely uh, download the exam guide, which I'm gonna to link to in the description below. Read that. I would say, you know, at least to page 13. Uh, that covers most of the stuff we talked about in detail. And then stay tuned for more on the journey. We're going to get more into the training that Layla's going to take. A couple of the first trainings she's going to do. By the way, these trainings are available. Uh, these are all AWS trainings. So it's going to be uh, AWS Cloud uh, Essentials, I believe, is the first one. And then uh, she's going to do uh, AWS Cloud Quest for a cloud practitioner, which is a really cool game um, where you also happen to be learning at the same time. So on that note, we're going to sign off in this video. If you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe, like, comment, and share, and we'll see you in the next video.